Well, it is your fan favorite segment, the fan zone. I'm Robert Osora and still hanging out with Tyra Zwayaki. And it is 0-0 in the match currently between Leicester and Crystal Palace as other matches will be coming your way. Fulham versus Bournemouth, Wolves versus Nottingham Forest, and then let kickoff will be a big one there. Tottenham versus Everton. But tomorrow is where conversations are. Manchester will be playing home to Newcastle, and the big one, the El Clasico, is back with Real Madrid and Barcelona. Tyrus, big games tomorrow. How do you rate them between Madrid and Barcelona? Barcelona turn into sharks whenever they sniff Real Madrid. Yes. And it's not just average sharks, mm -hmm. but sharks that have smelt blood. Yes. They go bonkers. Mm -hmm. They want them badly. They become a super Barcelona. Yes. We saw that last season. We've seen it in years go by. But I think the last time these two sides met, or one of the two times these sides met last season, Karim Benzema was not playing. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Yes. This time, Benzema should be playing. And when you look at Real Madrid, mm -hmm. they are a complete side. Yes. Barcelona are at times a very convincing side, very complete side. Mm -hmm. But at times they drop the standard. However, I don't expect that to happen tomorrow. El Clasico doesn't disappoint. A I bit? think Barcelona, the worst they can do should be a draw. But Real Madrid, the best they can do is to win. Well, it's a big one there between Real Madrid and Barcelona. But also, another one tomorrow will be Manchester City against uh, Liverpool. And from uh, yesterday's press conference, Jurgen Klopp coming out saying, we cannot compete against Manchester City. They are the best in the world at the moment. Is he considering defeat even before the field of play? There's one school of thought that will say those are mind games. Another will say he's speaking the plain truth. Yeah. They're, they're more or less at par. Mm -hmm. But, it, well, financially, although City have the head start, Liverpool are not owned by a pauper. Just remember that. The yes. American chap is well-oiled. Having said so, mine, where I come in, is in terms of football. Mm -hmm. Right now, Liverpool are really not at their strongest. Everyone knows that. Last season, if you might remember, I said the, they had reached their peak. And I don't think many people agreed with me at the time, but now with the benefit of hindsight, I think they can agree with me. Mm -hmm. Their midfield is so porous, Liverpool. It is so, so porous, it has exposed their central defense. When you look at Van Dijk play, you can't believe this is the same guy who was being linked with... Um, player of the year and that kind of thing a few seasons ago. Yeah. He's so exposed. That problem begins at their midfield. Their well, midfield is so wide open. The, the system they're playing exposes them to a lot of wide spaces that end up working against them. If you look at Manchester City, they're a proper solid side. And their midfield is proper solid to boot. I won't even mention Haaland up front. Let's not even go there. I won't even mention Phil Ford and up front. I mean, they're, they're just brilliant to watch. Their passion levels, their self and collective confidence, proper high. The tactics that they use, proper high. But my problem with them is that they've got to agree amongst themselves when you have the ball up front. For instance, if you're Phil Ford, don't, and you don't have a crystal clear scoring chance, you can always give that ball to Haaland. It's like they are creating a competition amongst themselves who will score more hat-tricks than the other. Don't be selfish. Be selfless. Once you start playing a selfless game up front, sharing that ball, you'll be shocked. You'll be scoring cricket scores. And they're capable of doing that. However, Manchester City will never meet a more weak Liverpool than Liverpool are right now. This is their best chance to beat Liverpool. I know it's at Anfield and that's just like Fort Knox, it's crazy. Going to Anfield and coming out with a point, just one point is hard enough, let alone three. But I think City have this one. They, they wouldn't be able to live with themselves if they don't win this one, but it will not come easy. Well, it's a big one there between Manchester City and Liverpool. That will be tomorrow, and then Manchester United versus Newcastle. But big talking point from midweek was Cristiano Ronaldo scoring his 700 goal. 
big for Cristiano Ronaldo. Not many players get to that level. Oh, certainly not. And my hats off to him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's done pretty, pretty well. Scoring 700 goals at club level. Yes. Haaland, who now already has about 15 goals out of like 10 games on average yeah. for, for his, his new club and he's being touted as the best new thing since the mobile phone in matters football, would have to score, is it 35 goals for the next 15 to 20 years, something like that. 15, 40 goals for 16 years. 40 goals for 16 years. Yeah. That's absolutely insane. I don't think he can be able to do that. It tells you a lot about the measure of the man that is Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes. Even though I feel age has caught up with him and his, his killer instinct is not as sharp as it once was, yeah. he's, he's, he's one, when we talk of Messi, Maradona, Zidane, Pele, Cristiano Ronaldo will always be up there with them based at least on his stats. They're ridiculous. You can't, you can't knock him off. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo now is back into that conversation considering World Cup is just a month away. 36 days to go and the World Cup will be live here on KBC and on Y254. Big games that will be covering for you and we'll be giving you all that. But also, sad news for Broughton midfielder and Zambia's own Enoch Mwepu who was forced to retire at just the age of 24 because of a heart disease that is uh, hereditary in their family. The question will be too bad and we are sad for that, but mm. couldn't it be cured considering that uh, Ericsson is back playing after the, well, the, the episode he went through in international duty? I don't think Ericsson's situation or condition was yeah. hereditary. Yeah. It's one of those things that are increasingly happening even amongst the fittest yes. of us, mm. even amongst very young people. Mwepu's situation is one of those things that science just has to say to you, okay, even if we combine with technology, mm -hmm. we think the best thing for you is to call it quits for now, but you can yeah. do other things in, in, fo in football. In, yes. And not just in football, in sports. Yes. Because he's a big thing. Not, him, not, and, not only himself, but to remember also Fabrice Mwamba and uh, the case that happened uh, back yes. in the day of... Uh, Mark Vivian Voy, who actually passed on during a game. Yes, so oh. for Mwepu, obviously you feel the pain for him. He, yeah. he was a joy to watch. He was one of those promising Brighton stars mm -hmm. that we've been watching uh, over the last, uh, this season and I think last. He's, he's yes. really made a, a positive impact. Mm -hmm. And he'll be missed sorely. Mm -hmm. Having said so, I'm glad they found this situation before it was too late. Yeah. And... He can now provide his services as a massive role model, either as an ambassador in the sport or just a, a businessman or all these things put together. Yes. He, he will definitely be in the picture. He will definitely be around for a long, long time to come. Well, big matches. 28 minutes gone between Leicester at the King Power Stadium versus Crystal Palace, and that game is still at 0-0. Coming up will be Fulham and Bournemouth, Wolves versus Nottingham Forest, and then Tottenham versus Everton. A big one that will be coming on at the Tottenham Stadium. But a little talking point here. Will be Wolves uh, in discussion with uh, Nono Espirinto to come back as their coach after the sacking of Bruno Large? I think it would be a welcome idea for me because yeah. they were talking of Lopetegui yeah. com coming from Sevilla, now that he's left Sevilla, mm -hmm. into the English Premier League and taking over Wolves. But I think that was not just meant to be, mm -hmm. or it was meant to be at some point, but there was some disagreement. The truth will come out at some point or the other, or maybe it's already come out. Mm -hmm. Nunez Espirito is one of those guys who had sort of figured it out with Wolves. And he's a guy who understands that team like the back of his hand. He feels the Portuguese, the strong Portuguese connection in Wolves that's there. He can be able to fit in well. It's like he never left yeah. and, and push the team forward. This is a promising side. This is a side that gives you... 100% season in, season out. We won them at the top tier of English football. 
and having Nuno, Nuno Espirito back, for me, I'm not going to be against it. And I hope he can be welcomed back. He didn't live on bad terms as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Let him get on with the business. Was it, and also Nottingham Forest also sucking their recruiting and the scouting department because they brought in 22 players. I think it's the first time I, I'm just a, a transfer window where you can sign a whole new team of 22 players coming on to Nottingham Funny Forest. Funny thing, they gave their manager a three-year contract. New. New contract. A, and <laughs> that's debatable. Yes. Given that they are sitting quite down uh, the, 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 the log yeah. or the, the league table for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have supported the idea that he was given a new three-year contract. I think the players are happy. Everyone, the fans are fantastically happy yeah. as well. But I thought, no, um, he could be given another role in the club. But at some point you have to say, this guy has, as a manager, played his part. I, I hate to use this phrase, I outlived his usefulness, because it sounds like as though he was to be used and dumped when he's not needed. But you get the gist of my argument, I, I, yes. I suppose. He has done his bit. Now you need someone who can keep you guys up. And now I'm seeing him struggling as we go forward in as far as keeping Nottingham Forest up is concerned. Well, it's a big one there between Wolves and Nottingham Forest. And then a big one then in the evening will be Tottenham against Everton. Antonio Conte, he lost uh, at Arsenal actually, but uh, it will be a big one for him against Frank Lampard side Everton. How do you see who is uh, going to take that one? This is the kind of game that favours Tottenham mm -hmm. because they're a bit better than Everton, to yes. put it mildly. Mm -hmm. Tottenham tends to struggle against the bigger teams. Yes. But on the odd occasion, they can upset them, like they did last season to Manchester City. They beat them 1-0 yes. in the first game of their, the season for, for those two sides. Mm -hmm. They are season openers. But this one against Everton... I would tend to think that I would not accept any excuse if Tottenham were to lose against Everton right now because they are a better side individually, collectively. In terms of Antonio Conte's tax tactics, he makes his substitutions at the right time. Yeah. No disrespect to Frank Lampard and his boys. They are a, f a fantastic side, but 90 minutes, you need longevity. Are they a 90-minute team, Everton? Question mark. I doubt they are. Tottenham are a 90-minute team, especially against a side that's not as strong as they are. Well, thanks a lot, Tyrus. We are out of time, actually. That's where we come to the end of Fans on and the Touchline here on Y254. Till the next time, good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing here on Y254.